Hello everyone, welcome to the class on Stereoisomerism. This topic I have made according to the PCA common syllabus of BP401 Pharmaceutical Organic Chemistry. This will come in second year, second semester or overall it is of fourth semester topic. So in this video series I will be making organic chemistry according to this syllabus wise. But these basics are important for GPAC as well as NIPER, especially in NIPER majority of the questions are coming from organic chemistry. Now, in this video, I am going to explain about what are isomers, what is chirality, what are enantiomers, what is optical activity and what are diastereomers. So, please pay attention to this video which is a basic video which will give you a proper understanding about stereoisomerism. Now, this is my video. You can just type in my name in YouTube, G. Sairajesh. You will get my channel. I have 123 videos and 1940 subscribers. If you like the video content, do subscribe. Let's get into the class. Now, under, let us understand what are isomers are. See, isomers, we keep reading about them. And isomers are the compound with same molecular formula, but they differ in shape of the structure. They differ in some way, but two molecules has got same molecular formula but they are not similar molecules. There is a difference in them and they are called as isomers. Now, among them, you have two different types are there. One, constitutional isomers, which are also known as structural isomers. Second one is stereoisomers. Now, in constitutional or structural isomers, what is different? See, for all of the molecular formula is same. Keep this thing in the mind. But what is different? They differ in the nature or sequence of bonding. That means, Atom to atom connectivity, they differ. Overall molecular formula is same. Let us see with an example. See, the molecular formula of a particular compound is C2H6O. It could be an ethanol or it could be a dimethyl ether. These are isomers. Now, where do they differ? Look at, in ethanol, what is happening? Carbon, carbon, after second carbon, there is a bond with oxygen. Whereas in ether, oxygen is present between the two carbons. So, there is a difference in atom to atom connectivity. So, when there is a difference in atom to atom connectivity, they are known as structural isomers or constitutional isomers. Constitution means how they are made up of, how the atom connectivity is. When there is a difference in the constitution and structure, they are known as constitutional isomers. There are so many types are there, I have explained only one type. The types are, see, chain isomers are there. There is a difference in chain. Positional isomers, like uh, uh, you take a uh, chloro substitution and a butane, the chlorine could be on first carbon or could be on second carbon. So, one chlorobutane or two chlorobutane. Molecular formulas are same, but the position is different. Similarly, functional, like this. This one is an example for functional isomerism. Metamerism and tartomerism are also, again, types of constitutional isomers. So, what you need to understand is broadly, isomers are classified into constitutional isomers, wherein there is a difference in atom to atom connectivity. What is the other type? Other type is known as stereoisomers. See, they have same, now molecular formula is same, but again they contain same sequence of atoms and bonds. That means atom to atom connectivity is also same, but they differ in three dimensional arrangement of the atoms. How they are arranged in the space? See, stereo itself means three dimensional structure. So, in this space, how the atoms are, are oriented is differ in stereoisomers. So, atom to atom connectivity is same, but they differ in spatial arrangement of the atoms. Now, again, in stereoisomers, you have two types are there. One, conformational isomers, two, configurational isomers. Conformational means they differ by rotation about a single bond. They usually interconvert inter rapidly. Let us take an example. See, cyclohexane could exist in chair form or it could exist in boat form. So, how the conversion occurs? By rotation of bond. When the bonds are moved here and there, the chair form will be converted into boat form or boat form can be converted into chair form. They are called as conformational isomers. They are also known as rotamers because with a simple rotation of single bond will result in another isomer. They are also known as rotamers, technically known as conformational isomers. Now, let us get into the other one configurational isomers, stereoisomers that are not conformers, they, they cannot be converted. Interconversion requires breaking and reforming of bonds. See, uh, most of the students has got a doubt between conformational and configurational. Remember, conformer is nothing but a, a rotamer, but configurational, they are not like rotamers. Look at this. This is a molecule 
on mirror you will get this molecule now what do they mean by interconversion is only with breaking of bonds look at this this is a different i'm sorry give me a second yeah this is a different uh, molecule this is a different molecule if you want to convert into if you want to this convert this s molecule into r molecule it is not possible even if you rotate this see even if you rotate this what happens this the pink one comes here and red one red atom comes this side you can see the structure by rotation of s you will get this but again there is a difference in the r the red atom is present on this side whereas here it has come this side so if you want to get back to r you need to break this bond put this atom here and put this atom here then only you will interconvert into another isomer this is what is the meant by rotation uh, uh, interconversion requires breaking and reforming of the bond just observe them both of them are isomers if you want to convert back to r you need to break the bonds then only you can convert it so that is the basic difference between configuration and conformation so keep this thing in mind isomers are constitutional isomers and stereo isomers whereas in stereo isomers you have conformational configurational conformational easy interconversion is possible with a simple rotation configurational no you need to break the bonds then only you will get the isomers let us get into little bit more details now see isomers as we have seen constitutional stereo isomers constitutional there is a difference in atom to atom connectivity in stereo you have configurational and conformational conformational the rotation will result see this methyl when it is rotated the methyl will comes here and you will get another isomer that is the reason why they are also known as rotamers rotamers are conformational isomers in configurational isomers again two classes are there geometric isomers optical isomers geometric you have kind of cis and trans are there see trans when both the group to the around this double bond oriented to opposite side it is called as trans when both of them are on the same side like this they are known as cis isomers in optical isomerism you have enantiomers and diastereomers are there now understand the differences in the first slide i told you only about configurational and conformational now here we have dig a little bit deeper in configurational you have geometric and optical are there in optical we have enantiomers and diastereomers are there let us get some more clarity see what are the types of isomers see isomers have same molecular formula but they differ in some way how do they differ if they have same connectivity they are stereo isomers if there is a difference in connectivity they are known as constitutional isomers that is what we have seen atom to atom connectivity is different now after this same connectivity if they differ by rotation about a single bond only by rotation of single bond if you get the same compound it is conformational if by rotating the bond you don't get that isomer no it is known as configurational in configurational we have seen two isomers are there diastereomers and enantiomers enantiomers are mirror images so configurational isomers which are mirror images are known as enantiomers whereas configurational isomers which are not mirror images are diastereomers just pay attention to this slide take a screenshot then you will understand everything clearly what is required connectivity is important same connectivity they are constitutional different connectivity they are <coughs> stereo also uh, i'm sorry uh, different connectivity they are constitutional isomers same connectivity they are stereo isomers now in the stereo isomers rotation will give the same compound then it is conformational no it is not giving the same compound then configurational in configurational the isomers are mirror images then they are enantiomers now they are not mirror images they are diastereomers so this is how you need to understand isomers moving further now let us see the concept of chirality chira in greek means hand what do you mean by this see our left hand is like this our right hand is this see both of them are mirror image you put a mirror between them left hand appears as right hand but they cannot be superimposed you put one hand on another see this is what happens see the thumb is this side whereas for this hand the thumb is this side they cannot be imposed they cannot be superimposed this is what is called as non superimposability now in nature we have compounds like this look at this molecule the molecule in the mirror it appears like this the yellow ball will come here the green will come here so they are called as non superimposable mirror images and they are known as enantiomers i explained already stereo isomers which are related to mirror images are known as enantiomers 
So in nature we have compounds like this. A molecule has got a mirror image of another molecule. Both of them has got same molecular formula. You can see this, all of them are same atoms. But where do they differ? They differ in spatial arrangement of these atoms. And they are known as enantiomers. Look at this. D-glucose has got an L-glucose. Look at this. The OH comes this side. H comes this side. OH comes this side. OH comes this side. So it is an exact mirror image. So in nature we have these compounds are there and these are known as enantiomers. And how do, how do they relate it to each other? They are mirror image of one another. Mirror images. So they differ in spatial orientation. In D-glucose, this OH is on right side whereas here it is on left side. That is what is meant by different spatial arrangement. Similarly in amino acids too we have this kind of thing. d alanine gives an l alanine in the mirror. So in nature such kind of molecules are there. The pair is known as enantiomers. Let us get some clarity. Now let us understand chira we have seen non sumpur impossibility. So see chirality is a property. When you say chirality, you are talking about a property. What is that property? Non-superimposability of a compound on its mirror image. So if a mol one of the enantiomer will show this property and that property is known as chirality. So non-superimposability of a compound, non-superimposability of a compound on its mirror image. That property is known as chirality. And what is chiral? Chiral means if a molecule is not superimposable on its mirror image, it is chiral. See the difference. When you say chirality, you are talking about a property. When you say chiral, you are talking about molecule. Molecules are chiral, their property is chirality. And what is enantiomer? Enantiomers are non-superimposable mirror image isomers are called enantiomers. Here the important word is isomer. Now look at them. Chirality, a property. Chiral, a molecule. Enantiomers, isomers. Non-superimposable mirror image isomers are called enantiomers. Let me clear one more concept here. Chiral atom or asymmetric carbon is different. A carbon atom connected to four different groups is called as chiral atom. Understand this, if this is a carbon, if it is attached with four different groups or uh, uh, atoms, then it is known as, this is known as chiral carbon or asymmetric carbon. So understand all these things, sometimes it will give you confusion, but clear the concept. Again, chirality, a property, chiral molecule, enantiomers, isomers. Chiral atom, you are talking about this atom. So these are all required, take a screenshot, keep these things in, in your mind. Now next one, optical activity. Now what is optical activity? The ability to rotate the plane of a polarized light by a molecule is known as optical activity. Let us understand what do you mean by this plane of a polarized light. Now see, this is light source. When light source is coming, it will be having, the light will be rotating in multiple di directions. This is called as planes. See, this is one plane. This is another plane. This is another plane. This is another plane. Now, this light, when it is passed through a polarized filter, the light comes with only one plane. You can see this only one plane is there. Unlike here, wherein you have multiple planes, this is only one plane is there and this is known as plane polarized light. That means the light is traveling only in one plane. This is called as plane polarized light. Now, when you send such a kind of plane polarized light, see this is the light source and you have polarizing filter is there and you get plane polarized light. When this plane polarized light is passed through a sample, this one has got sample. Now what happens is some of the samples, some of the molecules will change the direction of this plane. Look at this. Initially it is in this plane, but again it is changed. So there is a there is a rotation of plane polarized light. So the molecules which can rotate this plane polarized light are known as optically active or optical isomers. If the plane is rotated to the left side, they are known as levo isomers. If the plane is rotated to right side, they are known as dextro isomer. So this is again a property. Optical activity is a property. Uh, which says that a molecule can rotate the plane of polarized light. So initially the plane will be something like this and when it passes through the sample, the plane is rotated. This ability is known as optical activity and the molecules which show this optical activity will have optical isomerism. Now understand this, optical activity refers to the rotation of this plane polarized light. See, you are getting this plane polarized light and that is being rotated by a chiral molecule. 
Now let us understand some of the things and then get back to you. Too. See, we have seen two things. One, chirality. The other one, optical activity. So what is chirality? Handedness. What does it say? Non-superimposable mirror images. What is optical activity? It is also a property which says that rotation of plane polarized light. Now, the relationship between optical activity and chirality is absolute. That means if your molecule is chiral, it will show optical activity. Let me repeat this. If a molecule is chiral, it will show optical activity and no exceptions are there. Absolute means absolutely if a molecule has got chirality, it will show optical activity. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the ultimate criterion to show optical activity is chirality. So, in order to show a molecule to be optical active, it must have chirality. The criteria is both necessary and sufficient condition. If a molecule is chiral, that is enough to show optical activity. And in order to show optical activity, the necessity condition is chirality. Just remember, if a molecule is chiral, it will show optical activity. See, chirality again, non-superimposable mirror images. That property is known as chirality. Now, when you see this, see, we have seen all these optical activities. Now, at molecular level, one enantiomer will rotate plane polarized light to the same magnitude but in opposite direction of its mirror image. So you have you have two molecules are there which are enantiomers and uh, because they have chirality they will show optical activity. So if this molecule is rotating the plane to right side this molecule will rotate the plane to left side and the degree of angle which is known as specific rotation that is also equal. When both of them are present in same concentration and path lengths, so the uh, magnitude is very much same. So this is how enantiomers are related. One more thing, see enantiomers have I nearly identical physical properties and chemical properties, but they rotate plane polarized light in opposite directions. Just now I have told you the magnitude is also same. One enantiomer rotates to left, one enantiomer rotates to right. So they differ in two aspects. One rotation. Second one, they react differently in chiral environment. Reactions with chiral. So they differ in reactions with chiral environment and they rotate the plane polarized light in different directions. Only in these two aspects they differ. Now the last thing, now stereochemistry of diastereomers. Look at them. Look at these two molecules. These two are one and two are mirror images. You put a mirror, you will get an enantiomer. Now, whereas these two are again the same molecule, but uh, these two are again mirror images. But look at them. Compounds 1 and 3 are known as diastereomers. So this one and this one are not mirror images. They are stereo isomers, but they are not mirror images. They are known as diastereomers. Not only this, 1 and 4 also. They are not mirror images. So they are called as diastereomers. Similarly, these two also. Diastereomers, these two also diastereomers. Look at them. All of them. So stereoisomers which are not related to mirror images are known as diastereomers. If they are related to mirror images, they are enantiomers. If they are not related to mirror images, they are known as diastereomers. So when you see, see again diastereomers are different compounds. They differ in all physical, chemical and spectral properties. It is not like enantiomers which are same in physical and chemical properties but diastereomers differ in all properties. They have different specific rotations. It is not like enantiomers. See, one diastere diastereomer may be chiral, optically active, while another may be achiral or optically inactive. So they are not related. Enantiomers are not like that. If one is rotating, one is a dextro rotatory, the other one will be levo rotatory, and the magnitude is also same. But diastereomers are not like that. So they differ completely in physical, chemical, spectral properties, and they have different specific rotations too. So this is a basic understanding about stereoisomerism. Hope you like the class. If you like the class, do subscribe. Thank you for watching this class. In the next class, I will upload the remaining topics.